In my last couple shoe last maker tutorials, I showed how to morph shoe making patterns from one shoe last to another and also how to flatten them. But what if you don't have any shoe making patterns in the first place? In this tutorial, I'll explain how you might go about drawing patterns in Rhino 3D. If you already have a firm idea in your head of what kind of patterns you want to draw, you could probably just draw freehand right on the shoe last without any kind of reference data. Um, however, if you uh, do have some reference data you'd like to work from. Uh, these can be imported into Rhino using the picture frame command. And I actually <clears throat> previously did this when I was uh, demonstrating how to um, work with reference images for the purposes of designing shoe lasts. So uh, I, I suggest going back to that previous tutorial if you want to see some of the idiosyncrasies of how patterns work in relation to shoe last maker. But for the purpose of this tutorial, <clears throat> I just opened up the old file and I have an Oxford style in here, and we'll use these as reference images uh, to help us to design the, the pattern curves on the shoe last. So uh, you can see it's uh, kind of hard to see both at the same time. So what I suggest, when, particularly when you're looking from the side view, so I suggest using the uh, last transparency, maybe a, a 0 0.2, and that way now we can actually see through the shoe last and see the kind of patterns we're going to draw. And we can just jump over right to the the front, which is actually the side view in Shoe Last Maker. Uh, and then we can maybe increase the uh, the transparency a little bit more to see that uh, the underlying curves a little bit more easily. So you can see that the Shoe Last and the Shoe don't match up perfectly. Uh, I think the reason what's going on here is that this uh, the Shoe Last the Shoe that now since it's been removed from the Shoe Last it was designed on it's expanded in the in the tongue area so we're going to have to uh use these curve the uh, stitch lines and so on as as guidance but not an exact firm positioning for the pattern curves we're going to be drawing on this shoe last as far as doing the actual drawing there aren't any specific commands yet in shoe last maker uh for doing this so instead uh you can just use the uh built-in commands within rhino in particular the interp curve as in interpolate curve uh, command is the the hand, most handy one we're going to use so just jumping back over to the uh, perspective view here we'll turn off last transparency for a moment um, so the command i just type it in the keyboard you can also get to it from the the curve menu interp curve and so if you were just going to be on a flat surface uh, it would interpret curve just lets you pick on the uh, world x y plane here. That's the the default way it works. But you can also choose to interpolate a curve on a surface. And so uh, just on S R F, short for surface, on S R F allows you to pick a surface, and now our point will lie on that surface. Um, but it, now our next point, you can see, is no longer on the surface. So what you really need to type is persistent on surf. Now you can choose that surface. And now you can be drawing, always picking points on that surface. There's also a command called interp curve on surface. And then you choose the surface. And now that's also making sure that all the curves you pick are on the surface. And not only that, it keeps pulling the curve to the surface. However, this won't work for all the curves we want to design because we actually have a poly surface. It's, if you explode the shoe last, you can see it's split into the uh, uh, multiple surfaces. So that's why I don't recommend using that, cur that, that function unless you know you're going to be remaining on just one of the surfaces of the overall shoe last poly surface. I think the best approach is to use interp curve and then persistent on poly surf because it's a poly surface we're working with and then you pick the poly surface and that's essentially picking all the underlying surfaces <clears throat> now every and then uh, every point we pick is going to be on that poly surface so if you draw a series of points here i'll turn off some of this other o snap here the point end near center just so we're not accidentally picking other things here and then when you're done 
right click or press enter and then pull it to the underlying surfaces of the poly surface and now you can see that it's both passing through the points and it's been pulled to the poly surface one little hitch here is that because you're pulling to a poly surface the curve got split so you just have to join it back together and now it's joined and it's on the poly surface so that's kind of the approach to uh, drawing that uh, using the built-in commands um, in uh, Rhino 3D. Now that we have our drawing approach figured out, let's just delete that and turn the transparency back on 0.4 and jump over to the uh, front view, which is actually the side view in Shoelast Maker, and we can start to draw some of these curves, remembering that uh, it's more just giving us a bit of guidance than exactly where we want these curves to pass. So we will just uh, make sure your reference layer is locked and you got your various O snaps disabled so that we can just be picking points on the poly surface. You might uh, use the, the near O snap occasionally to um, help you get to the edges of the shoe last. So let's interp curve persistent on poly surf. Choose the poly surface. And now we can start to work on some of these curves. There's our first one. So that last curve is uh, for the top line. Next, we're going to draw the pattern curve for separating the quarter from the heel area. So once again, interp curve uh, persist on poly surf choose the last and uh, note that we're looking not perfectly from the side of the the, the picture that was taken of this Oxford shoe wasn't uh, with a infinite length focal length uh, lens and it's not directly from the side so we have to use our imagination a bit here we know that this uh, there's no way that this uh, pattern curve is going to blend right into the back profile. It's going to end somewhere interior to that. So just keep that in mind. So we'll, we'll start off just a little anterior and just start to move a little more anterior as we go here. And then just to make sure you're picking the, the right bottom edge, maybe jump over to the perspective view briefly here. And then pick, pick that point from there. And next, let's draw the uh, pattern curves uh, separate. Notice it's not perfectly smooth there. We'll, we'll come back to the smoothing that out shortly. Now let's draw the, uh, the pattern curves uh, for separating the quarter from the vamp. So interp curve, persistent on poly surf. And we'll pick the bottom edge from the perspective. Uh, let's just try picking it from the, the side and hope for the best here. Let's pick here. And start drawing. Okay. And now continuing along for the throat line and then we'll just uh, have to use our imagination for what this would look like here as it comes back to the, the top line. So we'll turn on o, end O snap briefly here just so we can start immediately from there and turn that off so we don't run into problems and turn off near for now too so we're not accidentally snapping to any other curves along here and uh, we'll get back to the perspective view to as we start to work a little bit more on these curves to make sure that they really make sense for the kind of shoe we're trying to build here and turn near back on 
and remember right we're drawing this uh, this curve here and not the curve separating the the vamp or the uh, the quarter and we're going to want to blend into this curve so we can just start turning the corner get your control point spacing a little closer as we get closer to this curve and then we can go back and and split that curve by this curve using the, the split command. There we go. And we'll smooth all that out a, a little later here. And next, let's draw this pattern curve. And you've got the Nero snap on, so we can just start drawing. And we're using a little bit of our imagination here for where this curve would be ending up. And now finally, the curve separating the vamp from the toe box. persistent on polysurface rather. So that should uh, do it for our, our main curves here. We'll be Miriam, it's uh, so that pretty much they're similar from medial to lateral so we can mirror them over, but uh, first let's clean them up a little bit and uh, do our smoothing so that uh, when we mirror it, uh, we already take, get the benefit of that smoothing. So let's uh, turn uh, transparency off and get rid of the reference or just uh, hide the, the reference data for now. Here I've pulled the uh, pattern curves to the shoe last surface using the pull command. And uh, the workflow from here on out is going to be to re rebuild the curves fair them, smooth them using the fair command, making sure that uh, all the while, making sure that the uh, the intersections are maintained. And it's a slow, lengthy process, so I don't want this uh, video to drag on for too long, so I will uh, just uh, uh, put it on a fast speed, and I'll uh, get back to a little more explanation after that's done. Now that we've got the uh, pattern curves, the main ones, drawn and smoothed, 
Uh, notice I, I used the mirror command to bring it to the medial side from the lateral and had to uh, do a fair bit of smoothing along the way there. Uh, but now that we have those there, another thing you might do is to uh, start to put in uh, stitch lines. And uh, these would be curves that are offset from these primary curves that you've done. So the command for that would be offset curve on surf. And now you can you can uh, pick the curves that you want to do that with. So it's going to say choose the sur uh, choose the base surface, and then the offset distance, say one millimeter. And now you'll want to split that curve by these other curves. And to show that it's a stitch line, you can use a different uh, line style. We'll change the to uh, let's see the line type to uh, a dash dot, for instance. So you can see you've got a different curve there. You could always change the colors too to make it more visually understandable. So here's what it looks like after I do that for all the pattern curves, and so that's uh, that's pretty much it. Now, uh, if you wanted to flatten it like I showed in my previous video, you could just uh, Select the default layer where we've been drawing. I'll first create a new layer actually called Flatten. And you can put all these on this Flatten layer. And then just press the, the Flatten button. I talked about these settings in the previous video. Right, press the Flatten button. can uh, take a little while. Oh, that's pretty quick there. Sometimes the orientation gets a little mixed up, so you might just uh, rotate that around and mirror these guys. Or uh, rather, just uh, rotate them. And there you've got your your flattened uh, patterns. Admittedly, it is quite a bit to wor uh, work to design these patterns, uh, especially I was just working quickly here. I'm, I'm sure some of you out there will do much, much more intricate and precise designs. Um, and it can probably take uh, some many hours to, to do this. Uh, but uh, recognize though that you only have to do that uh, one time. Uh, as you can, a couple tutorials ago, I showed how you can morph these patterns from any given shoe last and shoe last maker to another shoe last. So, even if it's a, quite a different style shoe last, you can uh, even a different heel height and so on. It's uh, you can bring that pattern over, and you don't you're never starting from scratch again. So, just uh, recognize that uh, it's kind of a one-time thing when you're doing a lot of work here. And you can even start to once you have this pattern, you can start to modify this pattern into other patterns. And uh, so it gets a lot faster as you as you get going. Um, so that's all for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you found the video helpful, please uh, subscribe to the channel. See you next time.